Welcome, friends. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, with your thought for the day, June 8th, 2016. Yes, it is the beginning of June, which can only mean two things. One, it's that time of year when a young man's fancy turns to love, and two, it's that time of year when an old man's fancy turns to conquering the world. Yes, it is time for the annual Bilderberg meeting. And although the Bilderberg meeting itself will need no introduction to my regular viewers, well, my regular viewers may not even know, although I have talked about it a couple of times, that the Bilderberg meeting is now pretty much a publicly secret <laughs> meeting. <laughs> By which I mean, not only has the MSM kind of, sort of, taken to half-heartedly covering the Bilderberg group in the last several years, with a lot of coverage laughing at those crazy conspiracy theorists that want to know what all of these, you know, rich, powerful people are talking about. Oh, how crazy is that? But also, of course, the Bilderberg Meetings has started its official website in the last couple of years, BilderbergMeetings.org, where they kindly provide a press release and participant list for each meeting, including the meeting that is about to take place in Dresden in Germany, 9th to 12th of June. And so we can read directly from BilderbergMeetings.org, link in the show notes as always. The 64th Bilderberg meeting is set to take place from 9th to the 12th of June 2016 in Dresden, Germany. A total of around 130 participants from 20 countries have confirmed their attendance. As ever, a diverse group of political leaders and experts from industry, finance, academia, and the media have been invited. The list of participants is available on BilderbergMeetings.org, and the key topics for discussion this year include... Number one, current events. <laughs> okay. Number two, China. Number three, Europe. Migration, growth, reform, vision, unity. Number four, Middle East. Number five, Russia. Number six, U.S. political landscape, economy, growth, debt, reform. Number seven, cybersecurity. Number eight, geopolitics of energy and commodity prices. Number nine, precariat and middle class. Number 10, technological innovation. And then it gives the usual spiel. Founded in 54, a Bilderberg Conference designed to foster dialogue, blah, blah, blah. Meetings are held under Chatham House Rule, which states that participants are free to use the information received, but neither the identity nor affiliation of the speakers nor any other participant may be revealed. Any other participant. Very interesting. All right. Well, there you go. So here's the official spiel. And... Yes, a pretty maddeningly vague list of topics, although I think we can discern some of the things that will clearly be on the table. For example, Europe talking about the migration crisis and also talking about unity in the face of Brexit coming up in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. And, uh, of course, Middle East, always a perpetual topic. Russia, obviously talking about the new Cold War that they're trying to kick off in order to, uh, well, well, continue the old Cold War, basically, for the same, many of the same purposes. Um, uh, cyber security, how, how best they can crack down on the, the web and free flow of information and increase their control and surveillance. Uh, geopolitics, energy and commodity prices. Of course, this is always something that's discussed at Bilderberg. And you might remember from my big oil documentary about the 73 Bilderberg meeting and the decision to uh, cr create an oil crisis, which lo and behold happened just a few months later. Imagine that. Um, precariat is one of those things that You'll probably have to look up unless you are a soci sociology and economics wonk. But uh, in sociology and economics, the precariat is a social class formed by people suffering from precarity, which is a condition of existence without predictability or security affecting material or psychological welfare. And it goes on to talk about this in relation to, say, the proletariat and contrast the, those two classes, etc., it talks about the, uh, the different precariats in different countries, like in Japan, where there's 20 million so-called freeters and things of that nature. So, yes, basically, it's the increasing condition of an increasing number of people in the deindustrializing, supposedly first world, where um, people are living on perpetually on the edge, working temporary or part-time or contract work, trying to make ends meet, and having absolutely no security at all. Uh, so that's interesting that that's going to be a topic of conversation at Bilderberg, I'm sure, because they care about the average worker, right? Or are they going to continue their Davos discussion that we talked about on New World next week, uh, earlier this year, where they were talking about the rise of the robots and the replacement of humanity? But anyway, uh, one of the other pieces of information here on the BilderbergMeetings.org site is the participant list, which, of course, is curated. I'm sure there are going to be several attendees who are not on the official list, but even the official list itself, I was just scrolling through here, and it's, it's funny to me. Uh, to see some of these names and to know that they probably don't mean a whole lot to a lot of people, but so many of these names have resonance if you followed Bilderberg and its ins and outs over the years. Um, I mean, for example, you might remember just uh, last week we were talking about the MSM finally reporting on the petrodollar, specifically Bloomberg, and I did make note of 
Bloomberg's Bilderberg connection. Let's also not forget that the editor-in-chief of Bloomberg LP is John Micklethwaite, uh, the former editor-in-chief of The Economist, another controlled propaganda rag. And let's not forget that at least since 1996, uh, from what we documentably, verifiably have, he has been attending Bilderberg. Um, alongside, of course, let's look, yes, of course, Henry Kissinger and, uh, and of course, David Rockefeller and so, you might remember that, where we were talking about Micklethwaite and uh, his attendance of the group. Although, of course, although he is the editor-in-chief of Bloomberg, Bloomberg seems to be oddly quiet about the importance of Bilderberg. And, hey, look at this, just as a uh, uncanny coincidence of uh, alphabetical order, Micklethwaite is right next to Zanny Minton Beddoes in the list here, editor-in-chief of The Economist. So there you go, Bloomberg and The Economist sitting in a tree doing something that rhymes with uh, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Um, and uh, let's just complete the list. Why not? Martin Wolf, chief uh, economics commentator, Financial Times. So yeah, the usual globalist mouthpieces are there. Uh, other names that have resonance uh, for Canadians, Heather Reisman, the CEO of Indigo Books, is a perpetual attendee. I believe she's even on the steering committee. I don't know how on earth she got that position, but she's been a stalwart of uh, Bilderberg for a very long time. And uh, and some that are just kind of baffling. Um, you have Chris Hadfield, the uh, uh, colonel and astronaut, a Canadian astronaut, who, uh, again, is quite famous and interesting that he's going to be attending. And of course, the usuals, the Henry Kissingers and the like. Uh, there's even some names in here that, again, probably don't have much significance to a lot of people, but have uh, a fair degree of significance to myself, like Vernon E. Jordan Jr. Who is that? And what's he doing there? Well, you might remember from Bilderberg 2011 when we were covering uh, Bill Clinton's attendance at the meeting the year before he became president of the United States. In 1991, a then-unknown governor of Arkansas was invited to attend Bilderberg, the year before becoming President of the United States. All right, here's the answer. I happened to be in Europe then on my way to Russia. I was invited to go to Bilderberg by Vernon Jordan, a friend of mine and a genuine hero of the Civil Rights Movement. And to the best of my knowledge, NAFTA was not discussed by anybody in my presence. I was talking to people who happened to be from Europe who did not give a rip about NAFTA. Blah, blah, blah. And the liar-in-chief is about to become uh, the first liar-in-chief, I guess, in the Clinton presidency later this year. Yay. Um, so there you go. There's uh, Bill Clinton, of course, Bilderberg participant in 1991, invited by none other than Vernon Jordan. Again, these names have resonance and interest uh, to people who have their eyes open and keep their eye out for these types of things. Um, well, here's another one that was interesting to me. Uh, the CEO of Coursera, Richard Levin, Coursera being that online uh, educational uh, online course tool that, uh, that exists these days that you might remember from episode 284 of my podcast where I talked about Learn History with Philip Zelikow. Yes, the head of the 9-11 Liar Commission. I uh, also did a, a World Global History Since 1760 course uh, on Coursera that I broke down and showed some of the propaganda going on in that course uh, back in, what was that, 2013. So, Interesting that uh, now the CEO of Coursera is a Bilderberg attendee and giving courses to people like Zelikow to spread their propaganda. Interesting how that works. Uh, again, a lot of these names have significance. Um, on the Clinton note, of course, let's never forget that 2008's uh, Bilderberg featured, of course, the secret meeting of Obama and Clinton. The, at Bilderberg, where, of course, it was decided that, hey, Obama's going to take it this time. Hillary, you can wait till 2016. And that's exactly how it's played out. And this was even well covered in the mainstream media as the press that was following these uh, these players around on the campaign trail were mystified why the Obama campaign locked their press reporters up in the plane and started taxiing out and then announced, oh, oh, by the way, Obama's not on the plane. He's attending a secret meeting in Washington with Hillary Clinton. And people wanted to know, where did they go exactly as Bilderberg 2008 was taking uh, place down the street from the airport where the reporters were taking off?
The Associated Press has learned that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton have met face to face. The closed door meeting comes just days after Obama clinched the Democratic nomination and just one day after Hillary Clinton's campaign announced she's planning to drop out of the presidential race. Campaign aides for both candidates say the meeting was about unity. Initially, it was believed that the secret meeting took place at Clinton's Washington, D.C. home. Obama's spokesman denied that, but won't confirm where the former rivals met. Robert, why were we not told about this meeting and that the senator wouldn't be on our flight until the doors were shut and we were about to taxi to take off? Again, uh, uh, you know, uh, we had a desire, Senator Obama had a desire to do some meetings. Others had a desire to meet with him tonight in a private way, and that's what we're doing. We witnessed. Etc. Etc. So, yes, interesting. Going back to the participant list. Um, some more interesting participants here. Uh, here's one that's particularly interesting. Uh, you have Wolfgang Schäuble, the, uh, the Minister of Finance of Germany. And that's particularly interesting because that is a confirmation of a report that came out, I believe, last month from Taz.de that indicated that Chance Chancellor Angela Merkel, as well as Wolfgang Schäuble and some other German figures, were going to be in attendance at this year's Bilderberg conference. Well, Schäuble is on the participant list. Oddly, Merkel isn't on the official participant list, but given that this is happening in Dresden, it would not be surprising if Merkel was going to be there on the DL. Although, again, let's point out for the umpteenth time, in this day where anyone can have video conferencing, you know, virtually for free on the internet, these people don't have to physically go to these conferences either. And uh, we do know from the footage that got leaked out from last year's uh, Bilderberg, uh, the Bilderberg Hotel, where uh, Luke Rakowski and Dan Dix uh, managed to sneak in and get some of that footage out, there were video conferencing facilities available, so they can Skype in anyone they want. <laughs> Um, whether it's Skype or some other uh, technology that they're using. So, again, she doesn't have to physically have to be there. But anyway, it's, uh, it's unlikely that she won't be there in one way or another. So, again, the participant list gives us some interesting uh, people that are worth checking out. Peter Thiel, of course, becoming a, a fixture. And it's interesting to us to, to wonder what other major tech industry uh, people are going to be there. We know Bill Gates and others have attended there in the past. So, interesting to watch that type of thing. But, um, well... I guess uh, the question is, where does this really leave us? And it leaves us in the position, as usual, of trying to get this information from the outside. And you could rely on the MSM. If you go to the, the truthiness uh, headquarters of Google News and type in Bilderberg, you're going to get some mainstream reporting from The Guardian and The Independent, 24.hu, International Business Times, Telepolis, uh, and then a bunch of you know non-English sources. There's not going to be a lot in the English language media. Surprise, surprise. Certainly not the Economist or the uh, the FT or any of those uh, Bloomberg, unless it's to mock the uh, the Bilderberg Group and its importance, even as they go and attend it. So again, I mean, rely on that for what it's worth. But again, we're going to have to come at this information from the outside, and it just strikes me in recent years how. We haven't really had the type of inside information that we used to have. I mean, let's keep in mind, we used to get very good, very interesting and reliable intel out of here on a semi-regular basis. Does anyone remember back in 2002 uh, when um, uh, Jim Tucker report recorded that there was going to be a, uh, a uh, the, the Iraq war was going to happen in the spring of 2003, not later in 2002, as some were predicting? Well... It's uh, recorded for posterity, link in the show notes. Uh, does anyone remember Daniel Estelin in 2006 uh, predicting the popping of the housing bubble within the next year? This, the afternoon conference, which started about 4 o'clock, 4, 4.30, they were talking about uh, one of the American delegates, I, I wasn't told who exactly it was, was talking about the, uh, <clears throat> the concern that the American citizens have had with the, with, you know, with the housing prices going down, so they're not investing that money. So what they needed to do is they needed to create the illusion that everything is going well. So what they're going to do over the next year, year and a half, is to bring the market back up to 1998, 1999 levels. They're going to get all the suckers to invest whatever little money they have left over, <clears throat> and that's when they're going to make the economy bottom drop out. Or does anyone remember back in 2008 when Jim Tucker successfully reported that they were about to drop the price of oil? They were getting concerned about oil prices being too high, so they were going to drop the price of oil right before the price of oil precipitously plummeted in a way that no one, no analysts were really expecting. So, 
Again, there has been good info coming out of Bilderberg in the past. We haven't seen that level of info coming out in recent years, and uh, Jim Tucker is no longer even alive, so whatever sources were feeding him information are not feeding him anymore, and a lot of the stuff that comes out of there these days is speculation at best, and not a lot of it seems to be coming true. So uh, it doesn't look like we have the inside sources that we used to have in the alt media, and there isn't a lot of good, solid intel coming out of there nowadays. So if anyone sees anything that's worth uh, sharing, please do share it in the comments section, and we'll try to learn our way forward with this. But let's, as always, keep all of this in perspective. Uh, again, people might remember my uh, my presentation back in 2014, why we must op oppose Bilderberg, talking about not only the Bilderberg group and its significance and why it is important to be against it, but also uh, why it isn't the be-all and end-all of all globalist meetings that we should be obsessively focused on to the exclusion of all else. There are meetings that are taking place year-round, and to put all of our eggs in the Bilderberg basket is to kind of miss the point, the ultimate point of this, which is it's the collusion itself, which can and does take place multiple times throughout the year, that is the core, the heart of this problem. And uh, Bilderberg is a good way of focusing on that point and uh, having a way to to understand and, and to help the public understand that, but it shouldn't be the only focus of our activities. So let's keep that point in mind. And if you haven't seen my presentation on why we must oppose Bilderberg, the link will be in the show notes as always. Finally, of course, if you do want more information on Bilderberg, you can of course just contact their press contract contact, media at BilderbergMeetings.org. And I'm sure they would be happy to answer any of your questions. I see nothing! I know nothing! Yeah, maybe not. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.